Our next guest, a professor of theoretical physics at the City University of New York. He's also an author of some incredible uh, books. He talks about things from black holes to hyperspace, the theory of everything. And I got to tell you, every time I go out on the road and I talk to about people about the screensavers, the number one guest they want us to bring back is Michio Kaku. It's great to have you back again via satellite from our New York Bureau. Michio, good to have you. Glad to be on. People uh, love physics, don't they? They, that's right. They're fascinated by the unknown, about worlds that we can't see, about whole universes that lie just beyond our comprehension. It's science fiction, and yet it's fact, which makes it all the more exciting. Let that's me, right. Go ahead. Well, the whole concept of other dimensions, black holes, being able to have wormholes take us to distant universes, holes in space, holes in time, that's the thing that really excites the imagination because now we're talking about physics and right. not science fiction. Yeah. Now, some science fiction doesn't do real justice to physics. In fact, most science fiction doesn't do real justice. One of the topics we wanted to talk about today is something called artificial intelligence. In fact, there was a big movie, of course, AI, Steven Spielberg's last uh, effort, uh, not a great hit, and I gather not something you're a big fan of. Well, I think artificial intelligence will be coming, but I think it's going to take 50, perhaps maybe 100 years before humans wind up in a zoo and our, our robot creations throw peanuts at us behind bars <laughs> and make us dance like we do with zoo animals. We had Ray Kurzweil on last week, and of course I'm sure you are familiar with his book, The Age of Spiritual Machines, in which he claims it is not far off before computers are as smart, in fact, smarter than human beings. Why is that such a difficult thing for, for you to imagine happening so soon? Well, I'm a physicist, and we are the ones who have to build these things. <laughs> and we realize that in 20 years, something called Moore's Law is going to collapse. Moore's Law says that the doubling time for computer power is, is about 18 months. Mm -hmm. That's why every Christmas, your Christmas toys are almost twice as powerful as they were the previous year. But that can't go on forever. It's held Eventually, up pretty well since 1975. That's right. However, by, in about 15 to 20 years, it will collapse, and Silicon Valley could become a rust belt. Uh-oh. We're talking about the end of the age of silicon, yeah. and perhaps the beginning of a new generation of computers called quantum computers, which is now exciting the world and igniting the imagination of physicists around the world. What are quantum computers? Well, quantum computers is the ultimate computer. It computes on atoms. And just last month, there was a scientific breakthrough that made headlines in the scientific world. Even the CIA took note of this. Mm -hmm. The most advanced quantum computer, now computing on seven atoms, proved that three times five is 15. Now, you may say to yourself, well, any kid knows that. Three times five is 15. But physicists were able to compute on seven atoms. Wow. Now, think about this. Once we can begin to compute on a few million atoms, we'll be able to break any code that the CIA can manufacture. The CIA is being very cautious about this new technology because it means that we will be able to break perhaps any code with a quantum computer. Again, within perhaps 20 to 30 years. Don't hold your breath. Now, the thing that's always puzzled me about quantum uh, computers is that the physical laws at that level are so very different. Things like uncertainty. Don't they, doesn't that come into play and, and make it difficult to make something that is stable? That's precisely why we will see the end of the age of silicon perhaps in 20 years. A Pentium chip, for example, has a layer that is about 20 atoms across. That's the thinnest layer in a Pentium chip. Mm -hmm. In about 15 to 20 years, the thinnest layer in a Pentium chip will be five atoms across. Five atoms. At that point, you don't really know where the electron is anymore. Right. The electron could be outside the wire, inside the wire. You have the uncertainty principle. Right. In other words, you get a short circuit. Therefore, a silicon is unstable at the quantum level. You cannot sustain this Moore's law continually forever. And yet, course, quant and yet quantum computing operates at that level. What does it do that's different? You see, quantum computers consist totally of atoms that are arranged. They're spins like a spinning top right. or arranged in sequence. That's why it's so difficult to do anything more than about seven atoms. That's right. the largest we've been able to manufacture at the present time. You can shoot laser beams at them, you can shoot radio, and by looking at the reflection, the reflection of laser light and radio beams off these atoms, you've done a quantum calculation faster than any known computer. Wow. Now think about this. We can outrace any digital computer 
with a quantum computer? Once we start to get them off the ground. Do you think it's going to take that level of computing power to, to achieve artificial intelligence? It may. You know, if we take Moore's Law out to 50 years, yeah. which it, you can't do, right. but if you take it out to 50 years, we'll be computing at about 500 trillion bytes per second. That's the speed of human thought. Now, again, we're talking about 50 years in the future. Assuming that Moore's Law keeps on going, we will be able to approximate the speed of human thought. Right. But like I said before, that's a big if. We don't know whether co quantum computers can even exist at that speed. Well, and of course, you're talking about the building the machine that'll do this, and I've had big arguments with Ray Kurzweil, because I'm of the opinion that it's not mere speed that makes a human thought uh, what it is. It's a, it's a very difficult and ineffable thing that makes humans human. Do you think a machine can do it? Well, there are two basic problems with robots. Uh, first is vision, and the second is common sense. Right. Now, our most advanced computers and most advanced robots have the intelligence of a retarded cockroach. <laughs> A retarded cockroach, not Arnold Schwarzenegger in the movie Terminator, but a lobotomized, retarded cockroach is our most advanced computer. That's pathetic. On Mars, we have the Mars rover. Right. And, and a few years ago, the Mars rover had the distinction of being our most advanced robot on a distant world. It had the intelligence of a retarded cockroach. Right. It would take the Mars rover about an hour to walk across a room. An hour. Now, does that remind you of any of your relatives, <laughs> any of your friends? And Maybe my aunt, but that's another room? story entirely. <laughs> <laughs> so we obviously have a long way to go. You talk about this stuff in Visions, don't you? That's right. In my book, Visions, I, I project 20 to 50 to 100 years into the future. And again, 20 years in the future, we do have Moore's Law, which can reliably predict the power of computers before it collapses. However, 50 years is quite difficult. 50 years in the future, that's when robots could, in fact, become a little bit dangerous. Wow. They may begin to start to exceed the, the, the capability of the human brain in certain areas. And therefore, I suggest that far in the future, we put what is called an Asimov chip inside their brain. Once they start to get uppity, once they start <laughs> to begin to have dreams about taking over, the chip will basically shut them off and we'll pull the plug on these computers. We're going to need Asimov's rules for robotics, I think. Micho, that's always right. great to talk to you. It's a great pleasure. And if you think 50 years is a long time, that means that's not that long. It means when our kids are our age or maybe a little bit older, it's not that far off. And it's an amazing That's right. World. And in 20 years, we will see the end of Moore's Law, the collapse of Silicon Power. What a world. Micho, thank you so much. If you want to learn more about Micho, of course, mkaku.org, M-K-A-K-U dot O-R-G is his website.